Hello and welcome to this brief introduction and instruction on the use of your department provided network cable tester and tracker. This multifunction tool will aid you in troubleshooting a suspected faulty cable or when you're attempting to locate a specific station cable in the switch room. In this video, I will introduce the functions pertaining to testing and locating network cables and demonstrate those functions with examples. Please note that this is a generic cable tester. The unit you receive may vary physically, whether it be in color, shape, or layout. The functions will, however, be the same. Let's see what's included. A user manual for your reading pleasure. The tester itself with a function dial, test button, diagnostic LEDs, an RJ45 and RJ11 jack. Out of the functions, we'll be using the network and the scan function, along with the RJ45 jack for all CAT5, CAT5e, and CAT6 cables. The tone, continuity, and RJ11 jack is more for telephony. We won't be looking at that today. Then we have the probe and remote. We have the on-off button there at the top, the volume dial, the LED on-off button, the scan button, the diagnostic LEDs, and the RJ45 jack. On the back, we have the speaker and the 2.5mm headphone jack here at the side, and included both in the remote and the tester is a 9 volt battery pre-installed. To complement that 2.5mm jack, we have earbuds. Also included, two cables, RJ45 to RJ45 and RJ11 to alligator clips. All of this comes in a zip-up little case for easy storage. First demonstration, a cable test. And we'll start with patch cords. This one is a brand new Cat6 patch cord, right out of the bag. Go ahead and plug in both ends to the RJ45 jacks. Change the function to network and press test. And as expected, a good cable. Each of the LEDs lights up in sequence from one to eight. That indicates that it's a straight through. And since every LED illuminates, we know that it's a good cable. Next, let's try this modified cable. Go ahead and change it back to the network function. Press test. And here you will note that it skipped LED 2 on both ends, both the tester and the remote side. 2 and 5 in fact. That indicates that pins 2 and 5 aren't reaching the other end. And that is because we clipped the wires responsible for those particular pins halfway through. So this will be a common error you will come across if, let's say, the cable itself is damaged, whether it be the patch cord, the home run, or maybe it's in the jack itself. Maybe the pins have been crushed inward or pushed down or completely damaged and removed somehow. Next, let's take a look at this particular cable. Also modified, change the function network, hit test, and you'll note that it skips LEDs 4 and 5 on the left, but on the tester here on the right, everything seems to be working fine. Now that indicates that there's a short. And that short exists on pins 4 and 5, which correlate to the cable here being bridged at the wires for 4 and 5. And then one more cable to take a look at, this one right here. Go ahead and plug in both our ends. Now this cable has not been modified.
and this is a good functioning cable. The only thing is, it's a crossover cable. Will it work? Absolutely. The switch or router will simply compensate for the fact that it's a crossover, but it's not necessary to use it. If you come across this, it's probably just fine to replace it with a straight through cable that you have lying around. But just so you know what that looks like, this is a good cable. Moving along to the next test. We now know that this patch cord is functioning properly, so we're going to use that. We locate the jack in question, and under the desk we find this doghouse with port 6001. Now it's irrelevant how the jack is mounted, faceplate, surface mount box, or doghouse, and it's irrelevant whether it's a Cat 5E or Cat 6 jack. The testing procedures are all the same regardless. But the first thing we want to do is take a look at the jack, perform a visual inspection. Make sure it's unobstructed, make sure all the pins are present and none of them are bent or broken, and make sure there's no corrosion. If everything looks good, it's all in one piece, we can go ahead and proceed. Grab your known good patch cord, plug it in, go ahead and grab your tester, turn it on to the network function, and we can go ahead and hit the test button. Next, we grab our remote and an extra patch cord, and we head to the switch room. In the switch room, we're going to locate the patch panel with the corresponding jack number. Now, in your example, you'll most definitely have a cable already present. So we trace that cable out and look at the switch port that it's plugged into. Make sure there's no activity on that switch port. Double, triple check if you have to. As long as there's no activity, we can go ahead and unplug it and use it for the test. If there is activity, you're looking at the wrong cable. In our case, we need to provide our own patch cord because there was none here. Plug that in, plug in the other end into our remote, and just as before, we look at the diagnostic LEDs. Now, this is a functioning cable and we know that, so it's irrelevant. In your case, if there is a fault, reseed all your cables, test again, make sure all your connections are good. If the fault persists, go ahead and open a repair ticket. However, if the cable's good, Whatever problem is being experienced, it lies elsewhere. The cable is functioning as it should. Okay, now let's assume we have a fun example where somebody didn't label the jack. The label went missing, or maybe it's just faded over time. So you look under the desk, and you can't identify what jack number it is. So when you go to the patch panel, you don't know which port you're looking for. Well, that's where we use the scan function on our tester. We'll go ahead, change the function dial to scan, and no need to push any test button or anything else. Just set her down and plug it in. Grab the toner, power that on, and note the scan button. We're going to push and hold that in. That tone is being emitted by our tester. So all we need to do is locate this on the far end. Now, the closer you are to the cable, the louder this is going to sound, and sometimes even neighboring cables will carry that sound. So you're looking for the loudest possible variation. Now when you get to the switch room, probably the easiest way to go about this is to follow the cables in the back. And once you've located the loudest one, move to the front, and if there's a cable plugged in, you can use that to verify, because it can isolate the cable and determine that it is the loudest sounding one of all. To verify, you can unplug and even hit those pins directly. Once again, when in doubt, if there's a cable present, trace it out. Make sure that there isn't any activity on the switch port. But, let's say we've established that it's this port here and we want to verify. Well, if there's nothing on this other end, we can go ahead and plug this in We'll get green lights across the board. Conveniently, now we can also go ahead and switch to network, hit the test button. We're definitely looking at the right cable, and in this case, it's a good cable. Again, if there's a fault, we would reseed our cables, and if it persists, we open the repair ticket. Otherwise, congratulations, you've identified your cable, 
and it's tested. And that's it. Really not much more to it. If you have any questions, please let us know.